We're welcomed by Christian Fuscarino, who is Executive Director of Garden State Equity, which is? New Jersey's largest LGBTQ organization. Oh, Christian, you've been with us many times, and I appreciate that. Listen, historic times in New Jersey. Let's talk about the curriculum changes uh, are about LGBT history in New Jersey. What is happening, and when is it happening? So all New Jersey students will now learn about LGBTQ history in schools. We're the second state in the nation to pass such a law, but we're the first state in the nation that will teach LGBTQ history in all subject matters from English to social studies. And this is important because LGBTQ youth should see themselves represented in history. Mm -hmm. There's this you know, terrible story of having LGBTQ people be silent throughout their lives and hiding their identity. And it's time that we can let young people know that they exist and they made contribution, contributions to our society. Two quick points. Uh, one, Len Dio, you know, he is founder and president of New Jersey Family Policy Council, said, you know what, that a person made a contribution to society, good for them. Do we have to extol their sexual orientation or what they did? They didn't accomplish something because of their sexual orientation, you say? Well, Steve, you made Len sound articulate. Unfortunately, for people that oppose this bill, they don't understand. By the way, understand. now we're going to have to get Len on here to be <laughs> articulate for himself. So go ahead. Um, for people that oppose this law, they just don't understand that when we're talking about historical icons, we often talk about their partners. So we are saying that people in our history are straight by mm. mentioning that George Washington had a wife named Martha. Okay, that means that George Washington's straight. We need to make sure that uh, historical figures that happen to have a same-sex partner we have to make sure that's included in history, and that's what counts. Yesterday, there was an announcement. There is a gentleman running for president, the mayor of, help me on this? South Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana, population 100,000. First candidate, if I'm not mistaken, in a legitimate campaign for the Democratic nomination to say, my partner, my male partner, my husband, and I uh, are very close, and he has helped me through a lot of things. And Mike Pence said, you know, God wouldn't be happy with you. And the mayor turned back and said, really? Don't blame me. Blame my creator, you say? Well, we love Pete Buttigieg. And, and That's who it is. Yeah, and then we're supporting him, uh, or I'm supporting him for president, because not only is he LGBTQ, but he has a lot of experience from serving in the military to running a small town in America that has made a comeback to making sure that um, the people are represented. Uh, and he's a millennial, so he has new innovative ideas, and I'm very happy to see that he's well, running. What could this mean? I mean, people are saying, yeah, he could do well in Iowa, and I don't, I, we don't do uh, national politics too much, but in the South, those primaries down there, the Carolinas, do you think a fair number of people, a significant number of people will say, I just want to know what he thinks, as opposed to what they think his sexual orientation is? Well. Pete Buttigieg has made very clear where he stands on policies and where his experience lies. Um, he talks a lot about his service in uh, the Afghanistan war, where mm. he has more military experience than most recent presidents. And Including so, this president, who, if I'm not mistaken, had some problems with his feet that did not allow him to serve in the Vietnam War. Yeah, our current president didn't serve because he had bone spurs. Um, so he has no military experience, and the that's Secret just a Sec fact. That's not any criticism. No. It's just a fact. Go and ahead. and the uh, Secretary of, of Defense, uh, who Trump appointed, has no military experience and either. And Mike Pence. And Mike Pence's son serves in the Marines. My partner also serves in the Marines. So I'd like to believe that Mike Pence has some idea of what sure. sacrifice means for our service members. Is this? I don't want to get too caught up in this. Is this a critical moment in our nation's history in this regard, with, with the mayor running? I think it's. I think what's great about the lineup of folks that are running for president is that they're from very diverse backgrounds mm -hmm. and they really represent the fabric of America. Let's bring it back to New Jersey. There's an initiative uh, that the folks over at Horizon told us about that you're aware of and involved in, uh, the foundation there. It's called Map and Expand. What does it mean and what does it mean in terms of health care? Yeah, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey has been a great supporter of this project. Right now, LGBTQ New Jerseyans are traveling into New York City or Philadelphia to find the care and services they critically need. And here at Garden State Equality, we're working with providers such as RWJ Barnabas on establishing trainings that will help make providers more competent in LGBTQ health care. Then what we're going to do is map them on a website so LGBTQ people can go onto this website and see where there are providers in our own state where they can find these services. Is there a cultural sensitivity component to this? Absolutely, yeah. There's, 
there's trainings um, around uh, diversity and cultural sensitivity, and also there's certain procedures that surgeons need mm -hmm. to be um, knowledgeable in. And so uh, we, you know, we handle the more um, LGBT 101 training, and mm -hmm. RWJ Barnabas is investing in making sure that we have surgeons here in New Jersey that can perform LGBT specific types. Let, let me shift yeah. gears again to a more uh, national social issue. New gender options uh, having to do with flying. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Sure, I mean, anytime someone boards on an airplane, they want to get from point A to point B. They shouldn't have to prove their gender at the gate. So mm -hmm. any of the airlines that are changing policies to make sure that transgender people can fly in a seamless way where they don't need to worry about their gender being exposed, I think is an important step forward. And that's happening with United, isn't it? United was the first airline to Please make Please tell me there are others. We hope that others will follow in United's footsteps. Um, let me ask you this. Final question. We've talked to you several times. How much progress in the last three to five years do you think we've made in terms of um, the LGBTQ agenda and the rest of us being aware and sensitive to it? A few seconds. Well, in big part, thanks to Governor Murphy, New Jersey's leading the way on LGBTQ issues across the nation. And so I think that for our residents that identify that way and folks that support them, New Jersey's in a much better place than it was four or five years ago. Thank you, Christian. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Um, this is Steve Adubato. This is State of Affairs. By the way, real quick, I just want to qualify this. The United is an underwriter of public broadcasting and what we do. Check you out next week. Thanks so much. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, PSCNG, United Airlines, RWJ Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Berkeley College, and by Summit Medical Group.